Brian Chaffin is back, finally, to talk about publishing his novel. This is Mac Voices. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Mac Voices featured gear, like the OWC Thunderbolt Hub. No matter which Mac you have, you can always use more connectivity, and the OWC Thunderbolt Hub delivers. Visit macvoices.com slash featured gear and do more with your tech. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, it's been way, way too long since we talked to our guest today. He's been hiding under a rock, um, but for a very good reason, he's getting ready to release a book. Mr. Brian Chaffin is back. Brian, hey, it's great to see you. Chuck, good to see you too, man. It's it really good been, to see you. I, I've, I've definitely I, missed you. I have missed you too a lot, and I, I try to keep up with your adventures uh, with you and Jeff on the context machines. So I'm aware, obviously, of the fact that your book, after a lot of trials and tribulations, is finally going to come out. Um, and I thought I'd get you to give us a quick update on where things stand and when we can expect to see it. Sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be self-publishing. I did try to go the traditional publishing route, as you and at least some of your uh, listeners will know. Um, and uh, it's hard out there in the publishing world. So that didn't happen. But I feel like my book is good enough to uh, to release. And so I'm going to release it myself. I am basically scrambling to do the many millions of things that uh, really that the publisher would do. Uh, you know, I had to get a cover. Um, I've got to make the the ebooks and the uh and make sure that they format correctly in apple books and kobo and kindle those are the, for sure the three platforms are going to do i may end up doing some print on demand versions but i haven't decided if i'm going to do that for sure uh and there are and then i've got all the social media stuff that uh, that anyone who's going to be an author trying to sell books just has to do these days so um I have actually been posting on threads. Now, pick your jaw up off the floor, but I, right. So, you know, but my, my, for years, my Twitter consumption was just that it was Twitter consumption. There was a lot of political news in particular that I would, uh, that I would read, but I would seldom ever post anything. Um, and the reality is that if you're going to be a part of a community, you have to participate in the community, right? I would, I would think that you understand that because you participate in the community. Yes. Yeah. yeah no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely, you don't have to necessarily be one of the top contributors, but yeah, you need no. to do a little bit of back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you're not, um, if you're, if you're not part like, so there are definitely people that I know and love who feel like they can just, Go on Twitter, announce something, and, and they will come. And that doesn't work. So you definitely have to participate in the in the community. Uh, so I've been doing that, and um, uh, which uh, got my head up above the the rock. And here we are. Well, that's I'm glad. I'm glad you're out from under the rock. <laughs> So you, you mentioned a couple things there. I'd like to just ask if you don't mind. Um, sure. You said Kindle. You said uh, what, what? Kobo, um, EPUB, I think. Um, oh, I, I said Kobo and Barnes & Noble, too. Barnes & Noble. Barnes Noble. Noble. It, that is Kobo, isn't it? I, yeah, it is Kobo, I think, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, yes. I, sh I should know this, but yes. Brian, is that part of the whole deal of, of having – let me ask it a different way. Are those choices you make? Obviously, you want the widest possible distribution. But if you decided not to offer it on Kindle, or if you decided not to offer it at Barnes & Noble, would that be acceptable in, in a self-publishing world? Um, currently, in the self-publishing world, the true options are Kindle and everyone else, or Kindle only. Those are the only real options. Kindle's got a significant part of the market share. Apple's number two, and uh, Barnes & Noble is number three at this point. Um, and I would rather not be on Kindle. I really don't like what Amazon's doing to the publishing world, and now Spotify, but I guess we'll probably get into that a little bit later. Uh, the... Um, 
I th- being on those three platforms for me is going to be w- good. I, I feel like that's like ninety eight percent of the market, and the other two percent is probably piracy. Okay, it's probably more like twenty percent, but whatever. Oh. You know, for books and audiobooks, I'm not quite so sure. And I simply say that because we now have a library distribution system that is has become modernized over the past several years. And so now I don't have to go to the library to check out a book or an audiobook or an ebook. I can yeah, just sure. you know hit the button and have it have it sent to me. Uh-huh. So Yeah, so I will I will will probably um uh, if i get any traction whatsoever i will probably try to get into libraries for what that's worth uh and i will be doing an audiobook i'm going to record it myself um there's a one particular voice that i i want to do is why i'm going to do it myself but being me i'm all freaking out because i've got to get everything perfect and and so i'm like thinking about all the millions of voices that i've got to do and it's, uh, it's a little bit intimidating but anyway, I will be doing an audiobook. It's probably not going to be at launch. It'll probably come uh, at least uh, I don't know, two to two weeks to a month afterwards. Um, okay, so that's interesting. So you said you're going to record the book yourself. It sounds like you're going to perform the book. Yes. Okay, why? What I mean. I, because it's you, it's kind of obvious, but why would you make that choice? Do you, do you feel that it adds that much to the story as opposed to having someone, you or anyone else, just basically read it? Um, the, this is, the, sorry, so this is going to be a complicated answer. One, I've already spent way more on the cover than I'm ever likely to recoup from the book. And that's just the cover. I've also, uh, once I got the cover, I hired someone to do, to design a WordPress theme for my blog that matches the cover. And I'm still waiting for that. That's really the, the thing that I'm waiting on is for my website to be ready to go for this launch. So the cover alone is probably much more than I'll ever make on the book. The, uh, the website design is, you know, that much again, and uh, hiring a quality narrator would cost me probably that much again. And then again, so there's a, there's a limit to um, to what I'm willing to throw at this, but also I suffer the arrogance to think that I can do it well, and uh, I've you know I've had many people, uh, not many people. I've had some people ask me to say that I should go into doing voice work because I've got a million voices. I'm you know always doing voices, and so I'm going to take it to heart. And I also know how to use a microphone and I know how to use logic. So I figure that I can do it. And getting a quality narrator is, is not cheap because it takes a long time to, to record an audiobook. Yeah. I just, I'm, I'm just curious because these are all decisions that, I mean, welcome to the modern world. You know, it was at one time, it was just writing the book. Now with the self publishing, there are a lot of, it's a great option but there's still a lot of details that you have to work your way through. And then as audiobooks have become so popular, now you have to think about doing that. How do you do it? When do you do it? With whom do you do it? And as I said, do you perform it or do you just have it narrated? So. Yeah. And th- so there are tons of services that'll, that, that, you know, I could, I could be, I could have paid someone to format my book for me, for instance, and to, you know, send it to, Kindle and Apple and, and Barnes and Noble. But the reality is, is that I know how to do those things. So I might as well do them. And there are also tons of services where you can, uh, you know, just hire someone to, to do your audiobook for you and they'll upload it for you. And they'll, you know, they'll, they'll pull the trigger on all that stuff. But again, I know how to do that and I'm not really willing to either pay flat money or a percentage for something that I could do myself. Makes sense. Makes yeah. Sense. But for, for someone, for someone who can't do those things, for someone who is, you know, maybe, maybe they're, you're listening to this right now and you're thinking that, uh, that you want to self publish and, and maybe I'm everything that I'm talking about sounds intimidating. There are plenty of places where you can essentially upload a word file and be done. 
and they'll take care of everything for you. I just didn't want to do that. Okay. Is it fair to say that that is, they don't, they do the production part. They don't do any editing or anything like that for you. Uh, uh, editing of, of an audio book or the book book? The book book. In other words, um, the pack, the there are plenty editing. of, plenty of places that will, that will provide editing services. For okay, you. So, so if I decide to write a book, I can send it to somebody with them. They're going to edit it for me and then send it to somebody else. And they're going to publish it, distribute, distribute it, maybe even make the audiobook version for me. Yeah. But it, but it all costs money. Yeah. Little detail. Yeah. yeah. It costs money or, or a percentage, but usually, I mean, I, I would say that the places that are more reputable will probably charge a percentage because they're actually going to have some skin in the game. Um, but, uh, I don't know. That's, I mean, like there, so right now there is like in, in the, in the book cover world, if you go to Fiverr, which is where I found my artist, um, there are tons of bottom feeding, uh, offers out there, you know, like book covers starting at $10. I mean, you can imagine the quality of their work and they're probably, they're probably doing a lot of stuff through AI, which is, you know, stealing the art of other people uncompensated and unasked. And, you know, there's all kinds of shenanigans out there and there are all kinds of people looking to make a quick buck. Uh, so, uh, my point is, I don't know what my point is. <laughs> I think I can do your point for you that, you know, you think you're getting something custom and, Maybe you are, or maybe you're getting something that is a, a, a template that's been tweaked. Because yes, I've I've used Fiverr for a couple projects, and you know, then you start to realize that this is a basic design, and you just you and I don't do enough of it to recognize that there's you know like twenty different basic designs for yep. let's say an event. So yep. they take that one of those basic designs. That, designs they tweak it a little bit they put your your event name in and then they sell it back sell it to you and it's like and I mean, to be fair yeah and to be fair about it it's okay unless you you your event is really super big or super visible and then you start to run into other events with similar logos yeah and then it doesn't feel good yeah and you know you get what you pay for right so and a lot of people a lot of people don't they don't know how much work it goes into making a book cover. So they may think that paying $200 is a lot of money because you know, if you don't, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. Sure. Um, and uh, so one, one thing that I've, I've been doing with Fiverr, by the way, is uh, checking the professional services, the pro toggle. Mm. So it only shows people that Fiverr has determined are, are professionals. So the, 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 the fees are much, much higher. Theoretically, the, the work is much higher quality. Like, so if, if, I don't know, let's go to uh, Fiverr right now. So book cover, see how many results I get. I get nine twelve thousand 12,948 services. Now, a lot of those are the same, the same people who have made multiple accounts and they're, you know, they're just all trying to bottom feed each other, you know, trying to, trying to get like every little thing that, that they can. And, you know, we've got prices under $30, 30 to $65, 65 to $110 uh, from $25 from $70 from $50. But if I click pro services, I get, Uh, right about 30 options. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. So from 12,948 down to 30 and 30 is more than was showing when I was looking, uh, uh, when I was looking before, but I fortunately found someone who's really good and, uh, he's fantastic. I also, by the way, uh, I hired him to make me custom, um, chapter ornaments. Do you know what chapter ornament is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, and that's uh, so a little bit of a throwback. Tell, can you tell our our listeners what? Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a little graphic representation that in, in I guess in modern terms that 
um, identifies this, this chapter. I mean, I've frankly, I always think it's sort of as ornamentation. Yeah, um, it's, it's totally ornamentation. So, and you know, so it'll be, it'll be like it'll say like chapter one, then I'll have this little flourish. Right. Right. And so I've uh, I haven't gotten it back yet, but I went to my cover designer. I I just decided at some point, like, oh my god, I have to have chapter ornaments because you know Brian, and uh, and I asked him, can you make me a chapter ornament that matches the cover? And he's like, uh, sure. What do you want it to look like? I don't know. I want it to match the cover. So go. And also asked him for custom scene separators. Hmm. So you know because I needed these things. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so I, I've sent you an arc and it doesn't have those. I'm sorry. Cause I don't have them yet. That's okay. I mean, it, I haven't even thought of those things in so long, but I know that I have, uh, in my, my sci-fi book collection, you know, I have plenty of books that have those. If I think about yeah, I think them, yeah, more I, I remember them. standard literature, you know? Yeah, maybe so. I, I but whatever. I'm going to have one. It's going to be mine. Okay. It's going to be custom. Yay. Okay. I, listen, I can't leave I can't leave the book cover though uh without asking this. In there was a time that you walked into a bookstore and looked through things and the book cover is kind of what if it didn't sell you it definitely attracted you. Do you 100%. think that is equally important now in the digital age? Yeah, it is. Uh, so like, for instance, my book cover actually comes with the front and back. Now, the one you saw is only the front because that's all that goes on an ebook. But I've got a front and back and spine if I do any print versions. Um, I suspect that covers are even more important now in uh, with ebooks because, it you know, when we're in a bookstore – and we're looking at books and we're looking at like, let's, let's say like, so I, I only buy eBooks anymore. I don't know about you. I don't, yeah. I don't buy, uh, uh, um, hardbacks or paperbacks. And that trade off was, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole here. That trade off was that, uh, I have my bookmark is always going to be there. So that, uh, you know, like, cause, cause I, I'm, I'm the type of person I, I will read for five minutes, you know, God forbid I have five minutes in which I've got nothing to do, quote unquote. So I'll, I'll pick up my book and read. And before, uh, you know, I've always got my book handy, but I don't like bookmarks because they mess up, they can mess up your book. And, and so I, I might spend my whole five minutes trying to find my page <laughs> and, and, but I just accepted that because that's, that's, that's what you did. And when I first started reading eBooks, I realized that, oh my goodness, I don't have to do that. I just pick up my book and I can start reading. Oh, it's joy. And so anyway, I'm essentially exclusively eBooks. But when I was buying print books, I would go to uh, Barnes and Noble or an independent bookstore and I would go to their new section and I'm, you know, browsing the books and uh, I'm probably going to pick up the ones with the covers that attract me most first. And then I'm going to read the back and I'm going to see, you know, is that interesting? But if I don't find something that I want, I'm probably going to keep going. I'm going to keep looking at books and reading the back cover to see if I'm interested. And until, you know, I've looked at maybe 20 or 30 books, which is a lot of books in a bookstore. But if you're on, Kindle or you're on Apple iBooks or uh, Apple books, I should say, or, or Kobo, uh, you will probably be looking at hundreds of books. Every single time you pull up that bookstore, you're going to be looking at hundreds. And most of that, most of that is going to be just, you know, based on the cover. And then they might click through and, uh, looking for interesting stuff in the description. But, uh, I, so anyway, I, I do think that the cover is even more important. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Um, cause I'm just thinking about the way I look for books when I do look for book. Well, see, I, I guess I'm, I've gotten away from just looking for something to read. I've got a reading list that's a mile long. Right. So, you know, that I want to, that I already know I want to read. It's sort of like, right. you know, 
uh, Netflix. I mean, I don't just sit down and say, gee, I wonder what's interesting. You know, I, I have a list I'm trying to get through. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Mac Voices featured gear, like the OWC Thunderbolt Hub. No matter which Mac you have, you can always use more connectivity, and the OWC Thunderbolt Hub delivers with three Thunderbolt 4 ports that are USB-C compatible and a USB-A port that is USB 3.2 Gen 2 compatible. The Hub delivers 60 watts of charging power, and because it's externally powered, doesn't compromise on performance. Find the links at macvoices.com slash featured gear. This was a perfect time to have, have you on to talk about something, though, that is a little bit more in the tech space, um, and especially since you're planning on doing an audiobook. Spotify just announced that they are going into the audiobook business, and they're going to, with a premium tier, you're going to get 15 hours of audiobooks, uh, audiobook listening, and then after that, if you that's that's per month, and then if you go beyond that, you have to buy blocks of ten hours. And right now, as far as I know, there I've got a bunch of questions, but the two that really jump to mind: a, if I'm listening at double speed, does that mean I only get what seven and a half hours, or do I get seven and a half hours at whatever speed I, I'm listening at? But more importantly, um, you know, what does this do to author compensation? Because if I buy a book from Audible, I mean, Audible has a library of, of books that you, know, you get with your premium subscription. I assume that somehow the, uh, the authors are being compensated or there's been some deal cut for those for whatever, you know, however, however it's done on the back end. But Spotify is not saying this is a limited ed edition. It's going to be, I think they said they're going to have a library of 150,000 books. Sounds like a lot, really isn't, especially if the books you're looking for are not there. But I want, as, as an author who's about to go through everything you just explained, not just the time and effort of writing the book, but also all the expenses associated with it, how do you feel about that? Is that a plus? Is that a minus? Does it commoditize audiobooks even more than they maybe already are? Um, <clears throat> I think that I think that what 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 Spotify is probably going to be doing they're going to they're going to take author compensation and they're going to they're going to spread it out over this beautiful platter and then they're going to squat over it and they're going to take a big poop on it. That's what I think. I also think that um like this is this is the problem with having tech giants and maybe even retail giants in charge of things like books or music. Spotify has a terrible record of compensating artists. You know, like I, I've always and 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 a terrible record of making any money. So I've always said that 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 you know they lose money on every customer and they're gonna make it up in volume. And uh that really seems to be their their mode i've i've long said this is going back to when T, when i was still in charge of tmo that the only companies that can really do music uh distribution music selling music um the the the, re, the, the retail side of music and books are companies that aren't going to be relying on that for their for their their uh model and what's the thing about Spotify and Kindle in particular, Amazon's Kindle is that they don't care. They don't care about quality. They don't care about the artist. Amazon in particular could not care less about the quality or compensation of their product. All they want to do is move more product. So they want everything as cheap as possible, and they want to, um, uh, uh, like, like the, the Kindle Unlimited. Are you familiar with that? The what? Kindle Unlimited. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've seen the numbers from artists from from uh, from uh, authors who say that like they're they're making like pennies on the pennies on the dollar from Kindle Unlimited views of their book. 
Like, you know, cause, because they're, they're already getting squat because it's, uh, because it's Kindle and because they have to price their books at nothing to, to, to sell them, which works just fine for Amazon. And now they're getting even pennies on the dollar on that. And I am, sh I have, I do not know because no one in uh, the press has seemed to have targeted this information. I don't know how they're going to be compensating authors, but I'm assuming it's going to be very, very poorly at Spotify because they've always compensated uh, music artists very, very poorly. So I'm not, I'm not at all excited about their thing. And, and you can't give, I mean, like you mentioned the further commoditization of, of, of books. I mean, it's this perpetual race to the bottom that Amazon leads. You mean, you know, it's interesting. Amazon is the Dell of retail. <laughs> I'm just now realizing this, like D Dell, Dell's whole thing is, you know, they, they, they were spending billions of dollars in uh, a year in R and D, but it was always to figure out how to make a computer with one less screw. Right. It was, they weren't, they weren't trying to invent any new technologies or do anything interesting with, uh, with design. It was always to, 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 to make computers cheaper. And Amazon has essentially done the same thing, especially in the, in the, in the book market. And that race to the bottom is not a good race. And people who enjoy that should not enjoy it. I think. I, I, I don't disagree with you on that. I mean, but it, it also seems like we just had this discussion on the British tech show today that, Everything is about more, 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 faster, 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 as opposed to a company like Apple that we perceive to be a little more, a, a bit more focused on quality um, of of the experience and of their products. And we were talking about the uh, Apple TV, uh, yeah, Apple TV Plus. Um, you know, just what they're doing with with that content, but. Well, and to, and listen to flip this around. First of all, thank you because I completely forgot about Kindle Unlimited because I really don't do Kindle that much. Um, but how about the libraries? I mean, is do you see that as a viable? Well, it, I mean, it's tr historically it's a viable channel. Is that a viable channel now for an author to to desire to get into? Um, it's. Uh, so I, th I think libraries are incredibly important, incredibly important to any functioning, uh, democracy society. I, I, I think that it is key that our libraries be given the resources to do what they do. I think that it's important for authors to be in libraries for two reasons. One, to essentially support libraries existence and two, to be able to get that broader exposure, but they're not going to make a lot of money, you know, because a library by definition is going to buy a book once or twice. And then, you know, many, many people will read it. So that's not going to translate into a lot of money for, um, for authors, but I think it's also a relatively small part of the, the commercial market. And for, I, I, so th the third thing, I feel like I'm doing the Monty Python bit where I'm like, <laughs> like, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 anyway, the, the third bit is that, um, people that don't have money to buy books, having access to books is incredibly important. It is incredibly important. And so, uh, I, I absolutely support libraries. I would love it if li any library on the planet wanted to buy my book, I would be incredibly like, I, I just, so I'm posting on threads, by the way, threads is where I'm posting and it's with at geek Dells is my handle. And, uh, my main character, Mason Truman is also posting on threads. So he'll post from the 21st or 22nd century for you. He's at Mason Truman PI. And, um, my point is that I had a point. I'm doing that thing. <laughs> doing that thing. Oh yeah. I, I just was posting on threads about how important Andre Norton was to me. I know we're probably running out of time. Andre Norton was a science fiction author, uh, who was very prolific in the sixties the and seventies and probably into the early eighties. And when I was young and I didn't have any money and 
the library is the only place that I got my books, man. Andre Norton was so incredibly important to me. Her writing was so captivating. She just opened up all these, these universes and, 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 and opened up these worlds to me. Right. So I would love it if libraries wanted to, to get my book, but I don't think it's going to make me a ton of money by any stretch of the imagination. As a matter of fact, I would, I would personally be okay with libraries getting my books for free. Okay. I was, I, I agree with everything you said, um, as far as the, the importance yes. of libraries. Um, yeah. And you and I don't often agree on things, but yeah, when it comes to libraries, I'm a huge, I, I've always been a huge supporter of them because it's just, there's still something magic about a library. I mean, I know yeah, we have absolutely. all this stuff, there's all this stuff at our command, you know, with a click of a, uh, a button and a mouse, but there's still something really amazing. Just like there, it's too bad. There really aren't that many bookstores in the sense that, you know, you and I grew up with. Yeah. But, but sometimes the used bookstores still invoke that emotion. Sure. Because it's just this world of discovery. So we got to get you back now that you're out from under the rock. We got to get you back more often. Well, um, I think the next time uh, we do this, I will have my cover reveal and I can show people, I can show people the blurb and, and uh, stuff like that. That would be great. Um, you, you pick the timing and we will make it happen because I've, I'm anxious to see how this whole process works for you. I'm anxious to see what, see what you've created um, I, I, I did want to say this too. I love the fact that you're having one of your characters post on threads. I'm not sure what it is. It's not a tweet. I don't know what you call a post on threads. I, I, I don't, don't think the community's decided yet. Yeah. So we call it a, th uh, a post on threads. Yeah. Um, but, but I love that. I love that fact. So I can't let that go, Brian. So exactly what are they going to be? What is he? 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 Yeah. He? he? Mason, what is he? Mason Truman. Okay. What is, well, you never know. Um, what is yeah. he going to be posting? Uh, he, so I've, I've been doing this for a little over a week cause I want some content for people who are interested in my character. I want something for them, you know, I want them to be able to find something if they go looking and, uh, he posts, uh, about cases that he's doing. He, uh, pay occasionally, uh, um, makes complaints about his society he talks about, you know, getting his coffee the old-fashioned way, strained from an algae tank. You know, things like that. Okay. So, folks, at the very least, in the show notes, I will have uh, a link to to Brian's Threads account as well as Mason's Threads account. Thank you. I appreciate so, that. So, you know, go and check it out. Um, looking forward to it. This I, I, Now I've got to go and friend – what I mean, you know, what do we call it now? But whatever it is, I'm going to do it on threads so that you, I get you follow on threads. You follow on threads. Okay. So yeah. I'm going to follow, follow both Brian at, you're at Geek Tales. Yeah. On, I'm Geek on Tales Twitter. on all the social media platforms, but I'm really only active on threads right now. Okay. All right. So folks, get out there and follow it and watch for Brian's book and watch for Brian to be back here to tell us when the book will actually be available. Thanks, man. Brian, it's been too long, and I, I love the fact that we got to see each other and talk. Um, we will do it again yeah. soon. Yeah. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. We'll be back with more soon, and then hopefully more Brian. As always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page, and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.